Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Tazzles in here, and I'm going to give you a quick little tutorial slash guide on how to use Adobe After Effects. You know, this is uh, one of the most powerful programs out there for video editing, so uh, yeah, let's just get quickly into this. Open Adobe After Effects. Mine has this weird issue where it does that. Uh, most copies don't do that, so all I have to do is like quit and open it. So. Yeah, this is one of the most powerful and complicated uh, video uh, editing programs out there. The good thing is, it's not nearly as complicated as you first think it is, because when you first get into it, you will see, yes, um, like once you start looking around, it's very complicated. But, you know, once you get the hang of it, it's not nearly as complicated. Yay! There. So, first off, of course file and uh, the way you open a file is different because a project like opening a project is actually different than opening a file so that is a very important thing to note so let's import file um, videos uh, let's go here it's uh, and you, you can load in things from here just like any other program, if you can click on one, double click it, or single click and then open. Um, or and if you want to select multiple ones, you can cl uh, click on one, then shift click on another one, and it will do all the ones in between those two as well as those two. Or if you uh, if you single click one and then you know control click on the others, it will only select them. So let's go with these and. Uh, let's go this one. These specific ones won't actually have much reasoning. Um, I will also be making, you know, more detailed guides on each of the parts because they do matter quite a bit. So basically, how you start working with a file, you can double click on one. If you uploaded a whole bunch of files and you want to see exactly which one, uh, the one you're working with is, you double click on it and it brings you into this, which just shows the footage and you can scrub through here and see okay that's what happens there uh, and if you want to uh, your composition is uh, your main editing window so if you want to open up a composition which is your editing space drag it down into this little video reel type thing um, that is uh, what makes the composition or if you want you can just click on it and you can make up your own specs uh, you can change the, all the uh, you can change the HD settings to higher definition lower definition whatever aspect ratio you want whatever but I'm just gonna drag it in because it automatically uh, fits the composition to the exact settings of this uh, file um, so you'll also notice here around me this is pretty dang close to the standard um, Adobe After Effects setup like it's pretty close to exactly what will um, y your Adobe After Effects version will look like when you open it uh, and there are ways to like move it around like if you uh, like click on it and then you can move it around it's very nice uh, like way of displaying how you move it around you know you can move it there or I can move it there or I can move it there you know that you can do that with all of them um, also um, th certain things that you're definitely gonna want to have with you uh, under window you know make sure project render queue uh, render queue is not exactly necessary but I like to have it up uh, composition you definitely have to have up effect controls very useful um, footage not necessary but it can be useful wiggler tracker they're not needed yet uh, tools are definitely needed uh, preview is it's always nice uh, paragraph not necessarily effects and presets yes uh, and info eh, you don't need it really uh, and then under view um, actually there's nothing really under view um, but yeah, also you'll notice as I click around here, you know, certain things will be outlined in this gold. Um, those are what you are uh, currently selecting. So, you know, 
uh, if I have this selected, that, uh, this bad blast um, composition, that's what's going to be affected by my next uh, procedure. So for instance, uh, we can go over the layers, new, we've got all these different layers here. Uh, if I want to, I'll just quickly add this um, solid, and uh, you know, it automatically added it to that specific one. Anyway, also if you want to select a certain one, uh, it will have this little highlighted thing around it. Also, these four things here, they're pretty useful to know. You know, you've got the eye, which turns the uh, like the viewing on and off. So, you know, you can't see it now. You can. And if I add one underneath it, like a file underneath it, um, suddenly it's this one becomes invisible, which means the one underneath it uh, becomes visible. And yes, in this program, it does matter which one is on top because uh, it will change the order of the videos themselves. Also, this little audio clip here uh, that turns the audio on and off. And one quick little tip that even some of the professionals don't know in After Effects. Um, so, you, you know, you're getting kind of a really advanced tip pretty early. Because Adobe After Effects, one of its major flaws is it is not very good on the... Uh, like, it's not very good when it comes to listening to audio. So if you want to listen to the audio, uh, you hit Control and then scrub through. And you'll be able to hear the audio. Like, I can currently hear it, but you can't through my speakers unfortunately because they're too quiet uh, but you can do it that way uh, you will find it useful also uh, if you are for instance editing oh, like one clip and you have it duplicated several times make sure that you only have one of the audio files on all the other ones if you have more than one it will just get really distorted sound and it will just be terrible so, you know, make sure you control that. Um, also, some of the hotkeys that are going to be really useful uh, is uh, 1, Control D, which is, of course, duplicate, just like in pretty much every other program out there. Uh, control Save saves, uh, you know, it saves your uh, your AEP, Adobe After Effects project, um, to wherever you really want it. Um, there is Control Z, which is undo which bring, in this case brings back my last thing. There's delete, which deletes something. Um, there's page up and page down. Page down goes forward one frame. Page up goes backwards one frame every time you hit it. Um, and the reason it's not the left and mouse button is that because that actually messes with this itself. You see it's uh, moving across the screen every time I hit that particular direction. Um, also, M is a very useful one because the selected layer it will bring up the mask. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have a mask. Uh, we will get to that later. Um, what other ones are there? Let's see, Control Y it can be useful. You know, it brings up a solid object. Um, I don't usually use it uh, because I can just go you know layer new so, uh, solid object, but it is there. It's a very useful one. Uh, sorry, R. If you hit R, it brings up the rotation, which in this case, you know, you can rotate the picture around. Control Z, undo. Again, if you want to keep undoing, or if you want to redo something, Control Shift Z, um, it will redo it. And um, there's also some masking ones that we will have to get into later because it makes more sense to do them later. Actually, you know what? Let's get right into the masking now. Um, so basically what masking is, it's cutting out something. In uh, if you're used to stuff like Photoshop or whatever, or you just know the basics of it, it, it really is just cutting something out. You draw around it and you cut it out. So, actually I should probably go into more detail with this. Also, these tools up here, you know, uh, these are different things. This one is the normal selection tool. This one is the grab tool, which just moves your, uh, like, your viewing area around. Uh, but you don't need it because when you have the selection tool, you know, the middle bellows button does the exact same, so this one's kind of useless. Zoom tool, uh, it will zoom in for you. You can also do that with using by scrolling with your middle mouse button, so if you have it, some mouses don't. 
or mice, whichever one you feel like using. Um, this is the rotation tool, it's kind of like the rotate section. Um, so there you have that. This is the camera tool. We can't use that until we actually put a camera into the scene, uh, which I might get into later. This is a rectangle tool. This basically makes a mask that is a rectangle only. Uh, and you also have a assortment of different shapes that you can choose from. This is the text tool, of course. It brings up a new layer automatically, and it brings up... It's a text layer. So, you know, you can just type Tazzles and... Uh, and then in this character section, you can mess around with, you know, actually, you have to select it first. You can make it bigger, you can change all these different settings around, you know, make them farther apart, make them taller, make them wider, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, so yeah, there's that. And, uh, but we're not really going to get too much into those. Then, if you have Adobe CS5, I will tell you now, uh, which it also requires a 64-bit computer, which uh, unfortunately mine isn't. That's why I don't have CS5. Um, but yeah, there is that. Which, uh, like, those are the main tools you'll work with. It also has this really neat, neat tool, which makes masking a lot easier. So anyway, to start a mask, we activate our pen tool. These other ones here, completely useless. Don't bother with them. Uh, yeah, there is quite a few completely useless things in there. So, you know, we click our pen tool, we select uh, our like our file that we want to mask, and uh, let's say, let's mask me out. And I'll just do a really quick job on it, because, uh, you know, we want the actual tutorial, of course. We want to learn all the stuff. So yeah, if you are wanting to do something that looks good, you know, obviously spend a lot more time on it than me. Uh, you know, get in all those little areas. Um, it also helps a lot more if you have like an HD camera because if you uh, or a camera that takes more than 30 frames per second, recommended like 60. Um, as you can see, also at the end, uh, you just click on the original point and it'll show this um, this pen tool with the circle, that means you're closing it off, and then you have this. Uh, you may notice this looks a little choppy. Um, so yeah, we've got this, and then, uh, yeah, now we can use the M button, which brings up the mask properties. Uh, like, regular M will bring it up, regular M will close it. Hit M twice quickly, and it will bring up all the mask properties. So you have this, and uh, you can add multiple ones, just so you know, you know, you can add a box here or whatever. And I will quickly show you how that make is useful. Um, for instance, uh, this thing where it says add, you can uh, select it, and you get all these different things. None, for instance, it will make it completely useless. Um, like, it will cancel it out, and it's a nice way to see what you've missed and then you can uh, you know stretch it out a bit because if you want to like change the mask uh, you can select a point and then stretch it around uh, to fit you know the parameters that you need if you want to add a point in at any point go to the pen tool select um, select in between any two of the points and we'll, you'll have this pen tool with the plus sign that means you're adding one if you want if you want to get rid of one you hit the pen tool with it, like go over that exact vertex, and it will have the mi pen tool with the minus tool. Do that, and now you're are like one less. So, yeah, we've got this, or we can do have add, and this one subtract, and then all of a sudden you can see this big giant hole in my body. Uh, yeah, you'll notice. Let's just get rid of this. Uh, you'll notice this also looks kind of choppy. Uh, that's, you know, it's pretty common to have it look this choppy, you know. But there is definitely a fix to this. Um, it often is, it's a lot better if you have uh, like a higher definition camera or if you spend simply more time on it than I did. Um, but if you have a lower definition camera, this is an inevitable issue is, you know, it'll just look choppy because the mask is higher definition than uh, you know, the camera itself can shoot in, which kind of sucks. 
you know, it sucks even more because, uh, you know, if you get into faster movements, you will find that you cannot keep up with the motion blur and stuff. So anyway, we've got the, excuse me, sorry, we've got this, and uh, the way that we can, also if you, you want to get rid of these yellow lines because they're annoying you, you can either hit the toggle mask, or you can click outside of it. <coughs> you know, anyway, so uh, let's just toggle it here. Um, and if you want to change the quality, you can also go into he this thing. It'll either say full or half usually. And you know, you can change the quality. Now it's half as the quality, a third, a quarter. For you guys watching on the recording, it probably doesn't change a whole lot, but for me it does. Uh, and then there's that. Uh, if you want to change the alpha, for instance, if I shut this layer off, this will either have a black background or this alpha background. They have the same effect, it's just a different way of looking at it. Um, and the more you get into it, the more you'll understand the importance and value of that. So, uh, what else have we got? Um, this mask path, what this means, it's basically, you know, what your specific math path is, mask path is. So, it's this one. Uh, the mac op mask opacity, of course, you know, it's Opacity, it's how solid the object is. You know, you can scroll that. And also, yeah, I guess I should tell you, the way you scroll through it is you can either click on it once and select, put in your own information. Of course, in this one particularly, you know, there is a maximum. Or you can click on it and hold it and drag it either way. Up or right is more, down or left is lower. Uh, so, yeah, that's a pretty interesting thing to learn. Uh, mask expansion, you know, it expands the mask out a bit uh, by a certain amount of pixels. You know, you can choose that. You can also go into the negative one, so it will cut off a, a certain amount of pixels. Uh, so I usually keep that as zero because I just don't like it. Uh, then there's this mask opacity. Uh, we already went over that. Mask feather. Um, Usually you want to keep this, uh, like, you want to keep this constrained proportions, this linking thing on, because otherwise it gets all messed up. But, uh, yeah, you can select one and scroll through it, and, uh, if I turn this off, you'll see it, so what it's doing is it blurs, that's what a, a feather is, in video editing terms and stuff. It's a edge blur, which is, uh, very nice, because, uh, you know, you can add just a little bit of edge blur, and, uh, it sort of blends it in more with the scene. So, it's a very nice effect to have. Um, so yeah, you got that. And, uh, we've of course got this shot. And also, next thing we should probably get into is keyframing. As I said, the mask path. Um, you would probably think first by thinking about it, you know, it's the shape. Why does that matter? Why is that even there? Well, you also notice the stopwatches next to everything. If you click on one of the stopwatches, um, that starts keyframes, and it's individual for each one, so it's interesting because you can have, uh, this keyframe go frame by frame, and then this one, you know, it's every, like, five frames or whatever, you can change that. It's a very interesting thing to have. Uh, it's also on every single effect. Everything is individual, so it's very different from programs like Sony Vegas where it's all at once. So here we have Mask Path, and then if we want to change it, we go forward one frame, page down, and then we'll notice, yeah, I moved. So, we now move this, these around to, you know, accommodate where I am. So, you know, you, like, the basics of it are pretty simple, you know, move it around to fit, you know, just the outside. And also a trick, if you're using the feather, um, I recommend that you go just barely inside of um, like the outline not over not under you want to make sure you don't get the background at all even after the feather so you know just go a little bit into it uh, you will notice it's a great difference it's uh, helps make things look a lot more professional um, so now we have you'll notice uh, not only do I move the keyframe moves with me sort of um, also, if you have CS5, it has this nice tool called the Roto Brush. I've used it uh, at school because at school we have the whole master collection of 
and the, these awesome computers. Anyway, um, then we can. It basically uses you know light and color similarities to try and use, you know, kind of like the Photoshop. Uh, I think it's called the magnet lasso or something, the magic lasso. And it basically uses you know what it assumes is going to be the object you're trying to go around, and you know you select the area, and then you're uh, that it makes a mask. So you have that. Um, so now we can, you know, just delete this stupid mask. So now we no longer have the mask. You know what? Let's keep it in just in case. But we'll change it to none. Now, w one other thing you'll notice is, um, of course, you want to learn how to do the awesome stuff. So, of course, that brings in effects and layers. Effects, you know, select this. Um, say we want to add an effect to this. Some of the basic ones, some of the most important ones in video editing, I'm not kidding you, is actually color correction. Learning how to color correct properly is, you know, absolutely invaluable. Um, you can also, like for beginners, I recommend, you know, working with auto color. Uh, it automatically uh, has a suggestion as to what you want. You can mess around with it a little bit, you know, make it increase the black clip, increase the white clip, you know, give it that kind of effect. Um, and then you have this brilliant invention um, that I think this is like my best friend pretty much in After Effects. It's the effects that have the blend with original act uh, option. You know, it, it blends it more with the originals for that more, okay, you got the effect, but let's also make it kind of organic. So, you know, that's always very nice to have. Uh, under color correction, we also have auto contrast, which does a similar thing, uh, except it just works on co contrast, not the color itself. Then we have auto levels. Levels is like contrast. Like contrast, what it is is, um, you know, it's differentiating everything. It's making the brights brighter than the darks darker, so it kind of gives it this artificial uh, greater detail um, because, you know, all of a sudden you see more definition in everything. Uh, levels, it's basically uh, making things either brighter or lighter, or brighter or darker, uh, like the entire clip all at once. So, you know, contrast has its place, so does levels. Like, if you're working in a dark place, you want to use levels and increase the le uh, the brightness on it, on the entire clip. Then you might want to add uh, dark, like, you know, like, all those other things. Uh, so, yeah, we've gone over color correction. Under the effects, we have so many different things. Also, in this effects and presets section, uh, you can just type in whatever you're looking for, and you can get it. Uh, for instance, let's uh, type in... Sphere. This is actually a plugin. Sorry. This is actually a plugin. Uh, Psychor effects. If you can get them, I really recommend them. They have some really cool stuff to them, and they expand the abilities of Adobe After Effects even farther. So if you apply it, uh, and how you apply it, you can just drag it on. Uh, you see, it does exactly what it suggests. It makes it into a sphere. Uh, and the cool thing is, you still have more things that you can work with. You can change where the light is. Um, that change the light intensity. And you might, you know, make it really bright. Um, like this ball basically has, um, you know, a light source. You know, there now it's sort of this half is dark, this half is bright. It actually kind of resembles a Earth to me. Uh, you can also change the rotation. So um, again, you can use the keyframes. Unfortunately, it's kind of, you know crappy with the edges uh, you can always you know blur those in though um, but yeah it, you can mess around with the rotation in all three axes so you have literally every rotation possible um, and you can work with each of the axes individually um, so yeah you've got that uh, yeah I just deleted the effect uh, I guess also I should show you um, this FX button next to the effect itself, uh, and just so you know, you can add unlimited effects to everything. Uh, it just eventually gets really slow, so if you don't need them, I don't recommend them. But yeah, this FX, you can uh, click it, and it will turn the effect on and off. You won't lose any of the information on the effect itself. Um, so if you've done a ton of moderations to it, 
Um, you know, you can keep them, but just turn it off temporarily if you want to, you know, see it from a different perspective. There is that. Now, some of the cooler effects, you know, distort. Um, one of my favorites is, let's see, liquify. Uh, liquify is kind of like a Photoshop type thing. Um, you know, you start off with all the tools. You have, you know, smudge, ripple, uh, twist, uh, shrink, expand, and those are the only ones that are really good, you know. You can take the, uh, you know, give me sort of, I think that, what is that called, like a faux hawk or something there. Expand my beard and chin maybe. And I kind of look like a rat from Rotten Link almost. Uh, yeah, that's smudge. Uh, you can also change the brush, si brush size and pressure. So, uh, if you want to work with a smaller area, you know, change the brush size. Uh, if you don't want it to have nearly as much effect, you know, change the brush pressure. If you want to have more effect, increase the brush pressure. Um, you know, simple as that. The ripple effect, you know, it's not too impressive, really. Uh, the twist effects are pretty nice. Uh, I have a lot of fun with them, you know, especially with eyes. You know, twist the eyes this way, then go to the other eye and twist them this way. That's always kind of fun. Um, so you have this, and then uh, this distortion percent is also like the, uh, uh, it's kind of like the, um, you know, blend with original. You can keep it at zero, and then if you want it to, you know, have sort of like a demon face warp type thing, and you've act you've edited it like that, um, you can keyframe it so it turns you into a monster. So, you know, you've always got that. Um, some of the other cool effects, um, let's go deselect that, go into layer, new, solid. These are really cool. Uh, solids, it may look like nothing here. Usually, if you're using a solid, the color that you set it as doesn't matter. Like, if you notice, you know, you can change the color of it here. And all the settings, the settings will uh, pretty much automatically, like, if you, uh, they will be the same size as your composition. If they aren't, you can hit make comp size and they, it will change that so that they are. Uh, you can change the colors around here. Uh, in this case, they don't really matter. Um, usually, you won't need them. Uh, you, you won't need to, you know, mess around with the colors or anything. But we've got lots of cool stuff here. Um, sure it's got audio editing controls. I don't recommend really working too much with these. Work with them in a more practical, uh, audio editing program than After Effects, because it just, it doesn't work as well. Uh, in, at least in my opinion. Uh, just so you know, also these, uh, these keying things. I've also got a few plugins activated here, so... You know, I won't go into them nearly as much, like, but keying, yes, this is, uh, where you have chroma keying, aka, you know, like, using green screens and stuff. Nice thing, like, masks are, like, portable green screens, they just are a lot more work. Although not a whole lot more with the new Roto Brush tool. Um, but yeah, if you don't have a green screen or anything, this is a, it's a great alternative for wherever. Uh, anyway, generate... Uh, we have some really cool things here, you know, Fractal. Actually, Fractal's pretty lame. Um, I was thinking, uh, let's see, where is it? Stylized Fractal. I can't remember which one is it. Simulation Fractal, I'm pretty sure. Nope. Fractal under noise. Yes, under noise and grain, Fractal noise. This is actually a really powerful effect. Um, for generating stuff like fireballs and stuff. This is what a lot of people do. Uh, they use fractal noise. And, uh, oh yes, also a quick little keyframe, uh, or quick little hockey. You know, T brings up the opacity, and P brings up the position, and S brings up the scale. Just so you know that, I forgot to mention those. So, you know, position, uh, whatever. I was trying to reset the position. Um, fractal type, you know, you can change it from to like turbulent smooth and it looks like this. It looks kind of like tech to me. I don't know. Uh, that just brings up uh, you've got all these different things. I don't know why they call it turbulent sharp because to me that looks, you know, more feathery. Uh, dynamic, you know, you have all these different things that can bring out different little effects. You know, mixing this with liquify can be really cool also. 
Uh, I'm just going through quickly all these things. That's nice. It's got a really nice uh, you know, sort of blur type to it. Uh, smeary. Let's see what this is. Swirly. Not a fan of those. Those are not comfortable. Uh, terrain. You know, you can use these to generate so many different things. It's like crazy. Strings. Threads. Uh, but for most of the time, I just use the basic one. Um, it's got this contrast feature built in. You know, you can increase the contrast. And, uh, you know, you get this option. And you'll see, you know, it made the brights brighter and the darks darker. That's exactly what I said it would. Uh, so, yeah, that's, you know, mess with the contrast. Uh, give you more, you know, difference to it. Um, also, if you are uh, able to, uh, my copy of Sony Vegas doesn't always let me. Uh, if you click on this and you go to OpenGL Always On, I recommend it. The quality is not quite as good. It's pretty close. It's not quite as good as uh, normal, like the normal viewing. But it'll also render things uh, faster, so, you know, that's a pro that I'm willing to go through. Um, so yeah, also you can mess with the brightness. Of course, it could go into the negatives. Um, oh yes, yeah, so you can wrap back. Um, wrapping basically means, you know, if something goes too far to one side, it'll come back on the exact opposite side. Um, See so yeah, how we got that. And let's just reset this again. Uh, increase the contrast a little bit. Invert converts it. Like, uh, yeah. Exactly inverts it, uh, and then you can also set presets, or you can have presets. I that looks kind of lame. Um, yeah, you've got all these neat little presets along with types, germs. Nothing shown up there. Smoke rising. Uh, that's always that looks kind of interesting. Smoke drifting. Nothing showing up there. But yeah, there are so many different things here. Um, this has so many, you know, possibilities to it. Um, you know, one thing I like to do, um, you know, give an ellipse tool. And when making a mask with the lips, um, you know, click here. Then also if you, like, hit control to make it so it's around the center. And shift so it's always a perfect circle. Um, so now you got this mask, and uh, also I like adding a uh, you know select it effect blur. I like giving it a radial blur, um, and then of course put the uh, action point at the center of wherever this circle is. Um, yeah, the action point is this little red crosshair type thing. Uh, that's sort of the center mark for your animation, just so you know. Um, so yeah, we've got this. And I like to mess around with it, you know. But it would take a little bit to go into, so I don't feel like doing it exactly. Uh, so now we got this again. But there are so many options to fractal noise, it's just crazy. Uh, let's go through some other effects. Uh, generate is a good place to get a lot of these generating ones. Four color gradient. This is mostly for coloring. Um, you know, green, blue, pink. Uh, you can change these colors in here. You know, single click it, and you'll get to bring it up. You can change it in real time. It's really interesting. Um, you know, the more you work with it, the more you'll get to understand it, and you'll realize it's a great coloring tool, actually. Um, Another thing for coloring itself, uh, let's just turn this layer off. I guess I should mention this to you. Coloring, color correction, uh, colorama, this is great for coloring. Um, you'll notice, like, this makes it look kind of weird at first. If you go to uh, output cycle, you'll notice you have all these colors. These are the colors that are used in here. Um, you can add more, of course, if you want. Actually, well, no, you can't. You double click on one. You know, you can change it to whatever color you want. All of a sudden, all the red things went to white, pink, 
Let's make it black. All the pink stuff goes to black, uh, etc. You know, all blue becomes dark blue, or cyan becomes dark blue. Uh, let's make this a yellow. And then the actual yellow. Let's make it purple or whatever. Yeah, you get the idea. Um, for this is really great for uh, coloring some stuff. I've done some nice uh, edits with this. Also, if you want to work mostly with your video editing skills and you want to like learn as much as you can in a le little as little time as you can, I recommend you know working on picture edits. I find they help so much because um, you don't have to worry about doing the entire video. You just have to worry about this particular one. I'm also going to quickly work uh, show you uh, particle. Particle, um, particle, tropical in particular. If you can get it, it's a great plugin. Uh, it is the best one I know that spawns particles. Although I know Video Copilot uh, is working on one called Element, and it looks really cool. I can't wait till it comes out. Um, I'll definitely do a review on that. CC Particle World and Particle Systems. That CC means it's a Psychor effect. It's a plugin. Uh, some versions of it, After Effects, seem to come with it. So. Uh, if you have it, use it. Um, but b the basic built-in one is Particle Playground, which has its own field too. Um, so you know, it's got this, and basically what particles are, they're randomly generated pieces. Um, so yeah, you go to Canon. This is basically the emitter point. You know, can change the direction. So suddenly it's going off a cliff. The color, we can make it like blue. Particle radius, make it bigger, smaller. Um, you know, you can do all those kind of things. Grid, uh, you know, you, um, well, actually, isn't grid usually set to no, none? Okay, no, it's not. Uh, grid is an interesting thing to work with. You know, there's like all these different effects. I don't have time to go over them all in this particular video. I'll do a video hopefully on all of the uh, the particle sy uh, systems you know all four of these and element when it comes out um, I'll probably go mostly into detail probably have like a couple parts to uh, the particular one because it is the most powerful one in my opinion it's got so much great stuff to it um, also one thing uh, actually let's go over another generate one if you like Star Wars this one will be really cool for you uh, you can add a beam. This is kind of like the Star Wars beam. Uh, it starts like this. You know, you can change the ending thickness or and the starting thickness. Um, you can change, you know, how it works over time. You know, changing this thickness. You know, all of a sudden this one's a lot thicker. Uh, then there's the softness. You know, the blur. Inside color, of course, pretty basic. You know, let's make this red. And the outside, let's make give it like a whitish. Um, and you can work around with that. You know, beam's got its place. But if you want seriousness, um, videocopilot.net, um, they have a free download for a preset of a really good Star Wars. Um, lightsaber type effect so I recommend that uh, if we go back to generate we can go advanced lighting advanced lightning this one's really cool it's great for lightning effects it looks pretty stinking realistic which is great and you can also turn it into a lightsaber by turning the decay all the way down or all the way you turn it up a bit to a point where you know it's just one straight line Turn the forking down to zero, and the turbulence down to zero. And suddenly it's just nothing but a giant stick. Um, so this is great for, you know, lightsabers. Uh, you can also mess around with the lightning type, so you can change it to strike. All of a sudden it's uh, just the two points. You have these two points that you can mess around with. Um, you uh, this one is the, like, you, you can uh, actually mess around with keyframes of the origin and direction. So, uh, you know, when you change it, 
from like so say the base of my lightsaber starts here then in a couple frames suddenly it's over here you can also make this to make a nice beam effect or laser eyes or something I've done that once so yeah you'll see it moves around that's how you move it around with the uh, uh, like a li lightsaber it's a great effect uh, to work around with um, lightsabers are probably your most dominant value of this particular effect but it's, it does also have that lightning thing which is absolutely great um, then you have the glow radius and opacity and the core radius, the core is the center um, if you bump it up a bit uh, to you know match your particular section uh, you can mess around with how thick it is also you know its opacity and its color of course you know we can change it to and then, uh, let's make it a dark red and also because of the stupid blue it's doing that weird thing uh, we can turn this to you know like a white and there you go you got your lightsaber ish thing so there is a really cool effect there um, also let's get around to uh, I want to get around to something else um, Tint, color correction tint. This is a really nice effect. Uh, first off, you'll notice it looks kind of lame, but uh, it's great for recoloring something. For instance, if you want it to match another section, uh, you can hit this eyedropper tool, drop it down to it, uh, or you know, drop it down to wherever, and you can mess around with the colors, or you can give it your own type of thing. And it also has this amount to tint, which is like the blend with original. So you can give it a nice little, um, you know, this that you can use this as your color correction or whatever. One second. Need some water after talking for this long. You can add this with um, like some auto contrast. You have a pretty cool, like already in a couple cl clicks. You've got a pretty decent effect. Uh, of course, you can work around with it more and get it looking better, but you know you've already got a pretty movie-ish type of uh, effect. Um, CZ for force motion blur, stuff like that. Video Copilot has some really cool effects. Uh, Red Giant, not going to get into that. Keying, I'll have to wait for a different video because I don't have some um, specific you know stuff set up for it but there will be a video for that you know subscribe if you want to see that um, you can also paint with it which is not exactly most entertaining so I don't recommend painting exactly I've never actually tried it uh, but yeah you use the brush tool um, let's see generates let's see if there's any really cool generates um, there's stroke, which uh, it basically takes the mask and you know makes it the image, which is really stinking cool. Uh, as you can see, this way you can have like a really cool silhouette. Uh, for instance, you could have it like moving around, and it'd be really stinking cool if you did that. Um, just letting you know. Um, What's another thing? There's also the auto trace tool, but I'll get into that in another video. Uh, also, there's motion tracking um, and stuff like that. These are all stuff, mostly stuff that will be used in other videos because uh, you know it does get kind of advanced. Uh, let's see with paint and the brush tool. I'll double click pre composition and layer to open it up. Okay, pre-composition layer. Now you can start painting, and your paint options are down here. So, yeah. Uh, you can mess around with the painting. Um, and I guess this kind of makes Photoshop like completely irrelevant, because you buy Adobe After Effects and Photoshop for the same price. But once you get to learn photo uh, After Effects, it's got like everything Photoshop does, so... 
you know, there's so much stuff to it. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, that's about all I've got for this particular video. There's so much stuff we can go over. Like, there's, like, literally millions and millions of possibilities of stuff that we can go over in this video. And then there's plugins. Uh, there's expressions which are really fun to work with. They're confusing at first, but once you learn them, they are so effective. Um, you know, making things organic. Um, one quick little thing, if you want to blur something, like for instance, if you're working with uh, two images that are of different quality, um, it will make a big difference uh, to blur it. But when you blur the higher quality image, uh, don't go into any of these other blurs. Uh, radio blur will either make it sp look like spin, or you can change it to zoom, which will give it this sort of effect, uh, which is kind of similar to light rays, except it's around a perspective point. Uh, and then you can an increase the anti-aliasing. I love anti-aliasing; it makes everything smoother and cooler. But uh, the best way to actually blur. It's a little confusing at first, but go to Lens Blur. It gives it a more organic look. As if you were blurring it with a DSLR camera. Um, let it load. You, uh, th it does look a bit more like a DSLR. You can change the iris shape to you know, Optgon uh, if you want a little more detail. The basic is hexagon. Uh, and then you, know, you can change the iris radius just for basic use and uh, you know you can get a more blurred effect you can also act like you've got some depth of field here um, and also you know camera layers uh, they actually work with you know 3d space so I'll save that for another video it's quite advanced it's quite confusing and this video is already getting pretty long null objects they're pretty effective. Same with adjustment layers. Once you once you learn them, uh, null objects are really useful for you know track motion. Uh, which track motion is really it's a neat effect because it can make something really lame. Uh, like you, it's sort of you know if you don't have a tripod, you can still make something look good without spending hours and hours and hours on something lame. Um, you know, with constantly tracking it and making it look kind of shaky. It can look really good. Um, so yeah, that's all we've really got for now. Uh, I'll also say do never use the option sharpen because it doesn't help really. It just makes it look a little bit stupid. Uh, just as a hit because, you know, sharpen annoys me to no end. I hate it when people use that to, and they think it makes their video look better. Um... So yeah, that's that. That's uh, a very in-depth look at uh, the very beginning of uh, Adobe After Effects. Yeah, you'll also notice your brushes. You have a large list of brushes, I just noticed. Um, so yeah, that's like Photoshop, pretty much. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys, you know, you learn a bit about this. Get more into it. Um, there, If you want to learn, you know, by doing actual projects, Go to videocopilot.net. They have some great tutorials. They they come with their own downloadable project files, so you can, you know, take the same files as him and uh, follow along with uh, the guy Andrew Kramer as he does his awesome guides. He's got so many neat things there too um, that cover so many bases. You will be learning this stuff in no time. You know, once you actually start thinking about it, do a couple projects with him. And start thinking. Okay, th if this does this, um, I can you know maybe apply this strategy to another type of video, and then start making your own really cool videos. I recommend trying it. Um, and yeah, you know work on your own videos, make them original, make them cool. So uh, that's all I have for, to say for now. Let me know what else you want to you know learn about this. Um, let me know what you want for guides, tutorials on you know, Adobe After Effects or whatever other program, really, I'll do my best. And, uh, let me know what you thought of the video, let me know if I screwed something up, let me know what I could have done better, what I could do later, um, so yeah, all that kind of stuff, leave it in the comments, let me know, I do love to take critical feedback, uh, but, you know, do make it actual, you know, 
constructive criticism because I'd like to know if I sucked, I do actually want to know how I could improve that. So, you know, let me know there. Um, that's all I have to say for now. This is Taz Olsen signing off. Until uh, next time. Bye.